Welcome to Logic. This series of videos is based on the textbook Logic by Stan Baronet, 4th edition. These videos cover chapters 1, 4, 7, and 8 of that textbook. They are based pretty closely on the textbook, but I add some additional information and materials of my own. This series, Intro to Logic, covers chapter 1. Part 1, Logical Arguments. Let's begin with the definition of logic. Logic is the formal study of reasoning which includes interpretation and evaluation of logical arguments and their components or parts. Logic is used in mathematics, science, computer programming, and in many other fields, such as the law, any type of activity requiring reasoning. Ancient Greek logic was started by the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle in the fourth century BC. First, some history. As mentioned, ancient Greek logic is regarded as having been founded by the philosopher Aristotle, who classified arguments as valid or invalid based on their logical form. His analysis is based on what we would nowadays call predicate logic or predicate calculus. This is looking at arguments defined by their form in terms of a pattern of predicates. So a predicate is basically a class or a set of things that's referred to by a name. So for example, if you use the proposition, all humans are animals, that contains two predicates, humans and animals, and a logical operator word, all. There was an ancient Greek school of philosophy called the Stoics, who had many teachings, but among others, they provided a basis for a propositional logic. This is classifying arguments as valid or invalid based on a form, a logical form, defined by whole propositions. So an example of a proposition is the sentence, it is raining outside. So this is something that doesn't have predicates. It's not going to show up in Aristotelian logic, but it could show up in Stoic logic. The ancient Greek logic of Aristotle in particular was continued by medieval scholars um, who contributed to it a bit at the margin. But the real revolution in logic happened in the 19th century with the birth of modern symbolic logic. This was created by thinkers such as Gottlob Frege, Bertrand Russell, and Alfred North Whitehead. Frege can be regarded as the founder of modern predicate calculus. The difference between this and Aristotelian logic is that Frege developed mathematical notation uh, in order to interpret and evaluate arguments as valid or invalid. This project of modern symbolic logic was also continued by Russell and Whitehead, who created the first modern propositional calculus. You could see it as the modern heir of the Stoics. Russell and Whitehead were also interested in the connections between logic and mathematics. Modern symbolic logic is also the ancestor of computer programming. Uh, symbolic logic classifies propositions as true or false, and this corresponds to the way information is stored by computers in digital form in a code of zeros and ones. So that's basically how information is also handled in logic, but instead of saying zero and one, we say true or false. So let's look at this concept of logical argument. A logical argument is a group of statements in which one or more statements are offered as proof of or evidence for another. So not every statement or not every type of language includes logical arguments. Not every verbal dispute has logical arguments, only if some statements are offered as proof of another. Here's an example. The consensus among climate scientists is that global warming is real and is caused by humans. Therefore, global warming is real and is caused by humans. This is using the first statement as a premise to try to prove the second statement, which is the conclusion of the argument. So let's define premise and conclusion. A premise is a statement that's intended to, pr to prove a conclusion. 
and a conclusion is the statement that is supposed to be proven by the premises. So whether something counts as an argument depends, at least in part, on the intention of the speaker or the writer. Uh, we can also detect if an argument is there by looking for logical connections between statements. If some statements can be used as proof of others, then that's a reason for thinking this is an argument. However, ultimately, intention is what we really care about because someone can try to use some statements to prove others. Even if there's no actual logical connection between them, it still counts as an argument, albeit an invalid or weak one. Here's an example. Premise. The consensus among climate scientists is that global warming is real and is caused by humans. Conclusion. Therefore, global warming is real and it is caused by humans. So these two statements look very similar, but they're not the same in meaning. The premise is only a fact about the consensus among scientists, about what people believe. The conclusion is about what is actually true. So there is a logical gap between premise and conclusion, which we generally see in arguments. What is supposed to be going on is that the premise is supposed to give evidence for or proof of the conclusion. And in that way, even though it's not logically identical to the conclusion, it is logically connected to it. It helps to justify or prove it. Let's talk about the difference between statements and other types of sentences. You may have never thought about this before, but not all sentences are statements. There are many types of sentences. Some include questions, commands, requests, proposals. These are trying to get people to do something. A question is trying to get them to give you information, such as, is that on the final? A command is more direct in trying to get someone to do something, such as, study hard. A request is basically a more polite form of a command. Could you please show me the notes from last class? And similarly with a proposal, let's study together for the midterm. A statement is an attempt to represent the world or reality in a certain way. An example of a statement is, this course is logic. We can define a statement as something that is either true or false. This means that the statement has a truth value. Now, basically any sentence, whether it's true or whether it's false, counts as a statement, as long as it has one of those truth values. Also, even if you're not sure of the truth value of a sentence, as long as it's the type of thing that can have a truth value, it's going to be either true or false, even if you don't know, it still counts as a statement. Example, there are aliens in a distant part of the universe that humans will never encounter. This statement is either true or false, even though we may, we may never know which. Let's talk about the difference between statements and propositions. I will sometimes use these terms interchangeably, but strictly they do have different meanings. A proposition is what you could think of as the underlying meaning of a statement, what the literal words of the statement are getting at, what they're trying to say about the world. This distinction is useful because statements can have different wording and be different statements and yet they can express the same proposition. As long as the truth conditions, what makes the statement true, as long as those facts about the world are the same, they count as the same proposition. Here are some examples of different statements that express the same proposition. It's raining right now. It's raining outside. And also if you look at statements in different languages that use different words, but have the same meaning, such as, es regnet in German or está lloviendo in Spanish. So it's useful to distinguish between statements and propositions because we need to be on the lookout for cases where we have different statements that express the same proposition. In symbolic logic, we would treat those as identical, as the same proposition. And sometimes uh, wording is changed in ordinary language contexts just for the sake of variety and interest. But in logic, we're looking for clarity and consistency. So we'll focus on the propositions rather than on the statements. Let's also distinguish between inferences and arguments. An inference is the underlying reasoning process 
expressed by an argument. Here's an example. It's raining, therefore we should move the wedding indoors. This has the same basic inference as example number two. It's raining outside, so we should have the ceremony inside. Now, with both statements and different arguments, there can be contexts in which the change in wording produces a change in meaning. As long as there's a different meaning of a statement or of an argument, they do not count as identical. So if you have, uh, there could be cases where it makes a difference between whether it's raining versus it's raining outside. Um, that's unusual, but logically possible. In that case, that difference in a statement could mean it's a different inference as well as a different argument. So an argument is just the literal words and statements. The inference is the underlying logical idea. In logic, we're evaluating the strength or validity of the inference, regardless of the precise wording and the argument we happen to be looking at. Next up, part two, premises versus conclusions.